Hey everyone, Rogue Gold here, and today we are taking a look at another build video. Now that intro clip that I just played is obviously a bit exaggerated. It's a little bit silly. I'm not using a spawn camp clip to try and say, oh my god, look at how good this build is. What I really wanted to underscore with that was to demonstrate the kind of ridiculousness of what many have seemed to determine to be, you know, quote, the build. Now, the thing to run. So this is not your typical build video, right? I'm not saying that I discovered anything here. What I wanted to do was try out the Ouroboros and Striker combination that a lot of people have already tried out since the gun released with this season. And I wanted to report my findings on that with you all and share some of my thoughts and as well show you my preferred setups with it. So if you didn't know, the Ouroboros is a new exotic SMG that got released with Year 5 Season 2. That is this current update. It is clearly very powerful and it can be obtained from the Paradise Lost Incursion. And if you want more details on how to specifically acquire it, you can find that linked in the video down in the description. And with that, we are pairing it with the Striker gear set. Now, Striker is a gear set that has been around for a long time and it's already been very good. But it is, in my opinion, even better when you pair it with this kind of an SMG that is very synergistic in the qualities that the two share. So, before I give you some of my thoughts, I wanted to share with you two build variations that I found to be quite good. The first one here is something that I would use in content where I think there's going to be constant gunfire, right? Things where you are constantly going to be shooting enemies and you're going to be able to maintain the 200 stacks that using the striker chess piece allows you. This includes things like Heroic Countdown, right? That is something that I'm going to show throughout this video as clips from Heroic Countdown. Not challenging, right? Heroic, which is typically something that I don't run. I only do it if I feel like I have a good group that has a good amount of uh, chance to succeed there. Because it's not really Heroic difficulty from the open world because it's scaled to 8 players, so it feels more like Heroic Plus, right? It feels more like the enemies you'd find in an incursion or in a raid. But as you'll see, when it comes up, this thing just tears through them. And that's because we're using the 4-piece striker with the chess piece and the backpack so we can get up to 200 stacks at 1% weapon damage, so up to 200% damage when you get that fully built up. We've got the Sombra Holster for even more crit damage and the Coyote's Mask for even more crit damage because we're almost always going to be fighting at that close range distance. So in total, we're getting 55% crit hit chance and 165% crit hit damage, and that goes to 190 when you're using that with Coyotes. So all you're going to want on this build is damage everywhere and crit on all of the main attributes and mods, and that in total gets us to 55% crit hit chance and 165% crit hit damage. And that will jump up to 190% crit hit damage when you're proccing the close range Coyotes buff. So like I said, Heroic Countdown, something where you can confirm that you're going to be getting those hits all the time throughout the activity, that is kind of a build that I would recommend. Otherwise, for more general use, right, Heroic Control Points, Missions, other things that you're just doing more casually in the game, this is a setup that I would recommend. Very similar concepts, right, for Strikers, One Grupo, and Coyotes. But instead, we're using the Grupo chess piece so we can get Obliterate. This allows us to get still 100 stacks of Striker with the backpack, so up to 100% damage. But you can simultaneously build up the Obliterate stacks, and that is something that is much easier to maintain than it is 200 Striker stacks. And in total, that will get you 125% when you combine Strikers with Obliterate, and then we're still getting all of those crit bonuses from using Grupo, Coyotes, all of that. So again, damage, crit damage, everything. Everywhere. If you want to run a little bit of armor on here, you can. I think I have one piece of it there. It really doesn't matter. It's whatever you want. In total on this, I'm getting close to 55% crit hit chance, 161% crit hit damage, and that goes up again to 186 with the Coyote's close range buff. So again, if you want something for more general use, this is typically what I would recommend. So as you can see in this gameplay, and as you'll continue to see whichever variation you want to use in whatever content across the game, this setup works incredibly well. Does it work too well? Mm, some people might get mad at me for saying yes, but yeah, I think it does. Now look, I'm not calling for a nerf. This gun and this combination is already in the game. People are having a lot of fun with it. I don't have a problem with that. For me personally, the game does become less fun when one setup outperforms the others to such a degree that you feel almost wrong for not using it. And I think this combination teeters on the edge of that right? And Ouroboros isn't necessarily the only or the main culprit here. Striker is too. Striker has gotten two reworks from back when it used to be kind of bad, and now it's like the go-to gear set for damage, like nothing else compares. But in my mind, this isn't really an issue of balancing. Rather, it's just a new level of power creep that we've reached when you factor in stuff like these items in this combination, the expertise system that is continually getting higher levels, people can roll more and more damage onto their guns. And we've seen the developers take on a bit of a new item philosophy when they're designing these things, like we've seen in C 
season one with the Elmos and now with the Ouroboros, these items are statistically becoming stronger. And so I think in my mind, it more brings into question the difficulty system that we have in the game. Is it outdated? Maybe. And I think this is all just more evidence that in my opinion, we need a really big refresh when we come to year five, season four, when we're getting the DLC and the end game redesign. For the record, I don't think we're getting a level increase. I don't think they have that kind of capacity to work that into what we're already getting. But we do know that the end game is going to change somewhat significantly, and I hope that we get a big reformation of how they handle challenge, difficulty, the expertise system, especially in PvP, all of that stuff. I hope that is all addressed when we're looking at this new endgame after Season 4 releases. But I digress, that is a bit of a side topic. That was a look at this new insane build combination that is now possible as of Year 5 Season 2. Like I said, I don't think in the immediate future they're going to make any changes here, so go out and have fun with this. It's certainly a lot of fun to tear through enemies the way that you can with it. And yeah, let me know your thoughts on this whole deal, whether or not you have the Ouroboros and have made this build and you've tried it out, or you're just spectating, and what are your general thoughts on kind of what I'm saying about difficulty in the game, all of that, let me know down below. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, and you want to see more content like it, then be sure to click that subscribe button down below. But that's going to do it for me today, everybody. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Rogue Gold. Ow. Additional hostile contacts.